so my first experience of drafting work was in mumbai in an internship in uh, azbn partners it was on the their office was on the 23rd floor right at the top of the building overlooking marine drive and the whole mumbai skyline okay and looking into the vast sea like and we used to we used to have to work late right so um, but on the other side of this like see there's no construction so you can actually see the sun go down the different shades of the sky while you're working and you know that that really led us to enabled us to work also much harder then it's otherwise possible i felt like i was on the top of the world at least you know as an intern i had the experience of the best of the best right and now one of the first transactions i got was a syndicate loan agreement to review there were many more documents to it there was a pledge agreement with it there was some security document there was a domestic syndicate loan agreement then there was a foreign syndicate loan agreement and there were many terms that i saw which i figure out there were terms like facility there were terms like security trustee and then there were various clauses which wrote down the duties of the security trustee the times when supposed to take certain decisions i really couldn't understand you know why this transaction had to be so complex right like if you lend money to a friend you know very clearly that okay this is the time i'm lending you for you have to give it back to me at this point in time like a sim- or even a simple loan agreement okay like uh, you have one bank lending to somebody what do you want to know you need to know the repayment dates you need to know the interest right and that kind of does the deal but why do you have to have like a 100 page document with seven other ancillary documents like sometimes there are mortgage deeds sometimes there are pledges all of these then various kinds of guarantees hypothecation agreements i was like what is happening and why is all of this in a different document why could they not write it in the same document then um, sometimes i would read investment contracts at that time i didn't understand a lot of the fema issues that were involved in the structuring of the transaction and uh, i didn't know what was going on at the back because in the contract i didn't see much directly written about the fema there were share pledge agreements there were promoter guarantees there were holding company guarantees i got a flavor of what the guarantee is about but i did not know many things like okay uh, what's the stamp duty on one of these Uh, on 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 each of these documents how do you compute it and if i read the documents they were very long they had many clauses so i was not able to i could probably understand like 20% or 15% and so for me you must understand i was in nujs top law school and i'm still managing i'm interning in the best law firm one of the best law firms in the country still grasping like 10 11% new stuff every day okay so it's going to feel to me like i'm learning a lot it's a great internship right but my question to myself was am i really learning enough do i need to learn more this kept going on in the back of my mind i learned a lot of new aspects but you know i couldn't learn enough to draft these documents had very big clauses long clauses voluminous and i couldn't use that kind of language so and sometimes i could only understand the concept broadly like i could understand the keyword the name of the clause the heading but not much more and seniors used to use these words reps and warranties a lot they would use the words indemnities a lot and i was like what is the big deal about this okay and it was it used to just beat me like why is this the biggest thing in the contract okay so in some transactions then i later figured and it this was during my internship only that they're using post error checks in certain transactions to prevent uh getting into the clutches of the local money lending act otherwise there will be another set of regulations that the loan agreement will attract then i was also given some due diligence work uh, in that same internship we visited the office of a company in the suburbs in mumbai and it sounded really exciting you know we were treated quite well and uh, and we had to review a lot of documents there's like a diligence room where information where documents are put in and then we have to make a note of of the issues that we find in the documents So this was like my first job where I had to figure out first internship work where I have to figure out the issues in a contract okay and I had to read the agreements from uh, from scratch and uh, the senior gave me an example of what an issue is okay but I was like this is the first time I'm reading any contract I don't know what is acceptable I didn't know how to spot the issues I didn't know what is acceptable what I didn't know what is non acceptable I didn't know how much is allowed to pass so in some cases where i found that a contract is valid there i didn't write any observation okay and then the senior would ask me next day that uh, 
you know, uh, did this contract have a renewal clause or not? And I didn't remember. I made like a table of 10, uh, 10 columns, 10 variables in a lease agreement. And this was all corporate leases. Okay. So where I didn't spot a problem, I didn't write anything because I was instructed that if you, if you find there's a problem, then you make an observation. So where there was no problem, I didn't make. And then my senior next day asked, what is the problem? Do you know? Uh, was did this clause contract have a renewal clause? Was this clause there? Was this clause there? They asked me a few questions and I was like, now I don't remember. Right. So at that time I didn't know because how should I review a contract, even which is right there. Also, I have to make some kind of comment so that my senior without reviewing the contract knows what I did. Okay. And that was my first aha moment at that time. Right. And also the, the big struggle for me was, I don't know to what extent, like I can allow something to pass because it's the first time I'm seeing any agreement whatsoever. So while I was doing diligence, due diligence, actually I was doing one kind of contract review work inside the due diligence. In every due diligence transaction, you will review something called material contracts. Okay. Sometimes you will also review IP registrations and licenses and things like that. There you will identify, uh, you, you will be again using your contract review skills, even though you call the work to be a due diligence work. Okay. Then on another. Uh, occasion I was reading a shareholders agreement and this was this was the first time here I read this word called tag along then I read a word called drag along right of first offer right of first refusal and then people used to debate that how is a first offer clause different from a first refusal clause and then while people gave a lot of insights on that in reality I would see one type of clause which they always write and it's a combination of the best of both worlds from the point of view of their client. Okay. So I never, I felt that, you know, this is very, very difficult to understand. And at that time I was working on uh, private equity transactions. So I'll explain, I, I realized this later. Okay. I didn't know this then, but I'll explain what happened in private equity. Basically there, the company, the investor is a private equity investor and they are funding, they're investing into a company which has had a lot of earlier stages of investment, usually from venture capitalists. Okay. Now don't worry about uh, more technicalities. What just happens is that, you know, each set of investors in the line who have invested in the company may want one or more variations of the rights. It will be easy and simple if all the rights are with the private equity guy, but sometimes some of the venture capital investors will also take some protective rights for their money. Okay. So I got damn confused that why is this clause worded? So in such a complex way, and I couldn't figure out the meaning. Then if I read it four times, I figure out the meaning, but the clause has a jargonistic, uh, term. And there are many jar jargonistic terms in each of these documents. It's there in shareholders agreements. It's there in another set of documents for loans. It is there in another transaction I did, which was for issuance of non-convertible debentures, listing of them on the stock exchange, the debt segment of the stock exchange, and then their private placement to specific institutional buyers. Okay. So now uh, every time I'm refining new technical terms in every contract, so it's not generic. Okay. Then uh, what happens is every time I try to read a technical term, I find that there are four sub clauses or five sub clauses in one big clause. So by the time I understand the concept, then I go into the logistics part, like logistics means who does what, when, okay. Concept part is written in the beginning. And for some terms, there is no concept explained. So that is basically coming from business parlance. Okay. Then uh, when they explain the clause, by the time I read the fourth or fifth sub clause, because it's defining the rules for different parties to follow. I have forgotten what the first clause is. Okay. So this becomes very problematic for me in the internship by that. Okay. At first, then I thought that, okay, I can't follow everything. So let me just hurry up with the proofreading work. Right. Then I also thought I tried to be think that, okay, what is going to help me in the long term? So, uh, I thought that I should focus on my learning. Then I cannot just uh, proofread and give it up. So this was an ethical dilemma that I was dealing with that. What does the firm want me to do? And versus what, what is in my long-term interest? How many of you face this when you got proofreading or how many of you felt, Acha, apne liye seek lu. should I learn for myself or should I do it for the firm? Should I do it faster or should I do it slower and focus on my learning? Okay. 
how many of you expect that acha let the senior come and train me first right and how many of you have doubts and you do the work and you still have doubts and you want to ask the senior 10 more questions about how the deal went right all of that happens right so it was happening with me as well all the time 